Legendary Gamers. Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting StarCraft 2 broadcast by your announcer here, Mr. Worm. Uh, this is going to be the continuation game between Slayer's Sella up here in the top right as the Red Zerg and his opponent uh, is going to be Manchi of uh, ESC Gaming down here in the bottom left as the Green Protoss. And let's go ahead and get some APM averages. Uh, looks like the Zerg is slightly ahead. Not too far, though. Looking pretty good. Get the production tab up. And uh, give me a second here while I turn off the cam. There we go. Get everyone going. Da -da 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 -da. Looks pretty good. Okay. So here we go. So uh, Sella, I'm assuming, is probably going to do another extractor trick um, based on what he did last time. Uh, maybe not. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so yeah. yeah. Uh, Sella really likes that extractor trick. Um, not a lot of Zergs still do that, um, but he likes it, so he goes for it. It just allows him to get out that one extra drone just a little faster. Okay, and he's actually timed it out so that when that Overlord spawns, he still has enough minerals. Um, okay, and so here Manchi comes in for a scout, and Sella is still not going for a scout just yet. Uh, he really, really, really does a late scout. Um, it's it's kind of impressive how late he scouts. I mean, for a professional player in a professional tournament environment, you would anticipate a normal scout timing is about 9. Uh, for the Protoss, it's usually after the first pylon. They drop the pylon, then they use that same probe to go scout. They do a couple of circles, and they come back. And sometimes that same probe will actually be the one to, to build, or in this case, it looks like he's going to be patrolling back and forth at the natural. And Cell is going to go ahead and take a couple pecks at him. And I don't... Now, this is this is going to be interesting to see whether he just goes straight for the third or whether he drops the pylon. You know, I mean, his his line out here is, is pretty close, but, I mean, he's got a... Oh, what's he going to do? Oh, he does take it. Okay, okay. And there's the Nexus going down. The Nexus actually beating him out. And let's go ahead and go back to the production tab. A couple of Zerglings, Queen, Forge. This all looks very, very standard. Um, nothing particularly unusual or exciting here. Um, I mean, except for the fact that these are high-caliber, incredible freaking players that blow my mind. Uh, beyond that, you know, everything here is... <laughs> <laughs> it's just really boring. <laughs> uh, sorry, that's that's kind of it's kind of difficult to say. Um, okay, he's actually one probe over. Sorry, that's going to be two probes over, uh, and those are going to go down here. So what he's looking to do on a standard mineral line, okay, you want to have exactly two rows, okay, and that is your optimum, you know, early game timing, okay. And what that means is that you are running at 100% efficiency when you are at two rows. Okay. Like right here, he's one above. But the moment this pops, you're going to see all these extra workers that are above those two rows move down. Okay, And it should end up to be exactly 18 workers right here. Okay, uh, Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, no, sorry, 16, 16 workers um, per side. So that'll be optimal. It'll be 16 workers uh, on, on each. And he will continue to do that on all three of these hatches. Okay. Um, for those of you who don't know, that's exactly the best efficiency rating. After that, you begin to lose about 25 efficiency per drone that you manufacture. And the same with probes. Okay, so let's go back this way and just check just the workers that are on minerals. And you'll notice perfectly 16. And he's probably got these queued over here. And this one queued over here as well. That way, every single additional worker will fill up this line. And once he fills up this line to the max, he will queue this one back to this mineral patch. And this one will stay exactly where it is. Okay, And from that point on, he will fill completely evenly. You'll see this one goes there. And this one goes there. And that one goes to this one. Okay, Why? Because he's probably already got perfectly one line. Actually, he's got one over here. And that's not really the end of the world if you're one over. You know, that probably means he's saving one to build something with. Um, like when he takes his, his gases. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, worker count. The Zerg is actually behind right now. Which is a little curious. Uh, I suspect after the next wave of production... There we go. Eight drones in production. Weapons one coming out. 
and there is a little bit of army coming down and a probe going out and looks like a little bit of mischief here in the middle and that zergling does survive why did that zergling turn oh slayers is like why did i do that why did i do that and of course he knows the attack is imminent right now this is the start of the push and the push is going to be on the third and he's going to see that with his creep tumor and now everything is going to change see 14 zerglings coming in he's probably going to wait till the last second to move this there he goes bringing in the other queen trying to save that one and slayers is just oh man his his work is so beautiful man oh god and look at that canceled the pylon so so this push has already been pushed back, and this is a bad spot for Manchi right now. Okay, Manchi's going to have to just... Now, I, I, I agree with what he's done here. He's cut his losses. Okay, he went ahead and he dropped the Twilight Council. He dropped the robotic facility. That was a good idea. And with all these Zerglings coming out um, of, uh, of Slayer at this point, it's really going to hurt his drone production. So it's actually going to give Manchi a chance to catch up, as you can clearly see here, for as, as far as the economy is concerned. Oh, a lot of Zerglings. Get that. Oh, man. He did manage to get exactly what he wanted out of that, which was that Stalker. And he's probably going to get this probe. Oh, he could so force a cancel on that if he makes enough army right now. If he, if Slayers decides that he wants this area, he's going to get this area. Realistically, Manchi is going to have to produce a lot of army in order to defend it, and that's exactly what he's done. He's thrown down a lot of heavy gas, that way he can get some force fields and ensure that he maintains this third position here, that he maintains his expansion. And here Slayers is, he's just like, I don't need that, I'm going to go right for the front. I'll just go straight for the front. But man, he is queued up, Where where is his queue point? I really want to follow this. No, no, that's, okay, so it's it's all right there. And he's hitting both at the same time, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be tough to keep up with. So he really wants to cancel this. And with those force fields... Oh, yeah, yeah, that is going to be forced to be canceled, probably. Oh, I don't know. Those are really good force fields. Those are really good force fields. He does make the cancel. And now he's just going to fall back with his roaches. Sacrifice the lings. He doesn't care about them. Oh, wait a minute. He's going to get some of those lings out. He is going to get some of those lings out. So, wow, that is beautiful play there from Sella. He just wanted to take a quick look at the front door real quick with those lings, see what he had to work with, and then back he goes. And, of course, he's got uh, a ton more lings coming out. Infestor pit going down. Creep tumor is being spread. He's going for his roach upgrades. And there, again, poor Manchi has to try to force the expansion. He really has to force this issue. And because he has to force this issue, now he has to drop more cannons to try and make up for the difference. And, of course, Sella is just going to go ahead and expand behind the pressure. That is just absolutely fantastic professional play right there. That is great control. If he maintains like this and getting the Spire, I don't know if I necessarily agree with the Spire. However, just as I say that, the Robotics Bay comes down. And therefore, Corruptors are going to be necessary. So that is wonderful play. Observer coming out. Uh, for Manchi as he chrono boosts out the next uh, level of his uh, weapons upgrades. Let's take a look at the upgrades here, if I can find a little bit of army to tab onto. So, so plus two, and uh, get a roach there, plus one. Okay. So, Slayers is behind in the upgrade war, but he is ahead economically, um, and he's going to be ahead in the gas... Ooh, uh, wow, that could have really cost Manchi right there. That could have cost him big time. Had Slayer's got a good wrap around him there, that would have been really, really bad. However, he's got the Observer out there. Too bad he doesn't have anything that shoots up, because he could kill this Observer. But he can't, so he's just going to have to run away for now. Poopin's Creep, denying the expansion. Let's look at the harvester count. Looking real good for the Zerg. Looking real good. And I suspect that this uh, that this is probably going to dry up pretty soon. However, these patches actually look pretty thick. They are thick. So, yeah. Not really a big deal for them. And Slayers has actually pulled a lot of these workers off early. So, he can, he's can he got time. He's got time. And he's just continuing to drone up. Going for weapons 1. I'm going to have to assume with that weapons 1 
that he's probably going to go for mutas. But as I say that, he goes for Hive, and now he's going for Zergling attacks. What is he doing? This is this is kind of kind of a bad spot because he's wasting gas all over the place. If you look at his upgrades, he just doesn't know what he wants to do. Okay, I mean Manchi has a clear defined path when you look at his upgrades. He's going for ground level armor. He's going for thermal lance. He's going for blink. So he's going for stalkers and he's going for colossus. Okay, pretty simple. I think he should be going for Archons, personally, because he's against Zerg. And Archons work really, really good against Zerg. However, Immortals work really good. But he's only got three of them. And he's got one Colossus. However, that is a lot of Infestors. If he, if he attempts to come through into this Spine Wall with what he's got there, he's going to get wiped out. And here is the push on the third and forcing him to retreat and he blinks just to get back a little quicker and it looks like he's just going straight for the nexus he is going to focus that nexus down and just throw his and throw his erglings away he doesn't even care and he tries to get out but that's really not going to help him he's not going to get out of there and then come the corruptors and another colossus on the way so Wow, I mean, Launchy is just falling farther and farther behind in this game, but his army level, wow, is really, really... I mean, he's, he's 1,200 minerals over the Zerg at this point. So the amount of chaos and damage which he can create and inflict is really what has to be concerning here. This is going to be a do-or-die push for Manchi. Either he's going to succeed here or he's going to fail. Okay. And unfortunately with... all oh, oh, look at those beautiful fungals going down. And there are fungals galore ready to come out. Those corruptors are going to kill those colossi immediately. Look at those colossi being focused down. And all those infestors... More fungals going down, locking in all those stalkers. There is just nothing to be done here. Sorry. Sorry, Manchi, but you are going to lose everything you have got here. Because while this is occurring, there are going to be more and more... 54 Zerglings coming in here, and they are just going to wipe Manchi off the map. I'm sorry, did you see that jump from almost 100 to 153? Okay. And Manchi just GG's out of this game. He knows there's no way that he can come back. That was a fantastic engagement by Slayer Sella. And Manchi just really should... He picked the absolute worst point that he could have engaged from. He believed that this, knocking down these rocks and coming in here into the third would be the best way to go. Because he knew the creep thread was already up over here. And he knew that there were these spine crawlers that extended down this way. I personally probably would have gone up this direction. And then circled around to the third. However, he didn't know that. He didn't know that because he didn't have the information. He didn't do the proper scouting. And obviously, when you're losing bases you're not going to have time to do the proper scouting. So it's not like I can really blame Manchi for, for what he did here. Let's face it, Manchi, Manchi would, would tear me uh, a new asshole any day of the week uh, without even blinking, probably, probably with uh, one hand tied behind his back. So he played beautifully, uh, but the engagement was bad, and Slayers just did a fantastic job of educating himself on what Manchi was doing, staying on the harass, doing run-bys, and eventually he managed to cut him off. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the cast, and I will see you guys next time.